Hallelujah. He came and he said, there are so many people that are part and parcel of a race. Just like the Christian race now, we have so many people that are trying to run. Huh. Jesus saved us and he said, oh yeah, run. So many people are on the track. It's like a marathon. But it happens to be Paul giving us an admonition that in this race, only one obtains the prize. It means that uh, the number of prizes are few, but the runners are many. Now, that is to say that a lot of people will not get a prize at the end of their race. A prize is not guaranteed for just everybody that is a participant in the race. Because of this abnormally paul now counsels us and says run so that you will obtain tell your neighbor run so that you will obtain a man wanted to leave full-time ministry and he went to my father and the lord for counseling so he's frustrated in the city of port Harcourt that the funds are not coming in things are so stressful the land has rejected him and my father and the lord called him and said since you started ministry have you ever fasted three days dry fasting and the man said no now this guy wants a mighty ministry but he's not ready to fast dry he has planned from the beginning of his race that he doesn't want to obtain <laughs> now <laughs> you, you are not with me <laughs> it's not everybody on track that has a vision to what that's why I say you should preach to your neighbor. Because there are so many people running not with a vision of obtaining. So Paul now counsels us and he says what? Run so that what? Preach it to your neighbor please. Run so that. Well, the way I see you, I know your prayer life. I saw you praying the other time you were, you were shaking. Uh, well, I counsel you. <laughs> Run <laughs> so that what? I remember in Kano we fasted. Oh. Now, you see, the truth is <laughs> not everyone on the track has a vision to obtain. Doesn't have any intention to obtain, but he likes the race. But Paul is saying the prizes are few, the runners are many. So wisdom demands that you should take a decision at this point. Run with an intention of obtaining. Now, so I want to assume, because of Paul's counsel, that we want to run to obtain. No, it's an assumption. You can only answer for yourself. Do you want to obtain? Now, if you want to obtain, it means the rest of the instructions and counsel that Paul gives is relevant to you. And I say, every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Mm. You see, striving for spiritual mastery is going to affect every area of your life. To affect your eating. It will affect your sleep. If you are that type that wake up in the morning, you talk till 8.30 in the night so that your groin, this place will start paining you. If you start striving for the mastery, it will temper your talking. Hallelujah. There is this example I normally give about Taekwondo games that they held. I think it's Nuga. Nuga. So they wanted some people that would qualify from this zone to represent the state in Taekwondo. And the guy that was representing Union Greek in that category that time, he went on break and ate. And so when he came back from break, he was heavier than the category. And that was the only fighter on that level that you Union Greek had. So the coach said, All right, you you went and ate. He put him on seven days dry fasting. Not to preach in a crusade. Yeah. <laughs> You are not you are not with me. <laughs> not so that it can be in IBB square. No, see, dry fasting for Taekwondo. After seven days, that extra weight had dry... <laughs> every man that strives for the mastery 
is what is temporary in art not one thing meanwhile the guy in union uh, the, our own representative from Benin State University the guy has muscles bicep anytime he comes to the floor he just he comes like a like big guy Jesus. ha he's just and he has bow legs so he comes like this oh. <laughs> my big guy you put um shin guard and hey and because most of our students that time know nothing about taekwondo he beats all of them so he, he just come when when he's come they are giving way <laughs> every man that striveth for the mastery his pride and arrogance had to be tampered if he was going to win but there was nobody to challenge him that would teach him so he was full of himself and the young man that fasted in union greek the day they were coming to take their weight to see if they were within the category he was hungry and he was staggering his coach said Kai! don't allow them know that what's that so he was hungry but he had to smile have you seen a hungry man smiling that was like all of this was for the mastery <laughs> he came on the scale smiling and he i think it was just one kilogram below the category that the team so they marked him that he had passed the category so he was released to, to eat when the competition started our man came to you know they were hailing him oh hey This junior Greek boy beat our man and broke that his bow leg. Broke his broke. He had already won, but he broke his leg in addition. <laughs> Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Even if you are a married man. You'll be temperate in touching your wife, not because of quarrel. Uh, I know what I'm saying. Well, see me later. If you are a married man, see me. Ah, it will cost you. It is true for good for us to say the truth now, so that you will check whether you want to continue. Because the prices are few. Don't waste your time on the track. <laughs> Hallelujah. God doesn't want any appetite to gain mastery over you, so you are going to be tempted. There is a woman like that, she must eat beans by 4 o'clock. You don't understand. She's like drum, but beans. One day she was on the system working, working, and it was 4.30. And she shouted beans by 4. God! <laughs> so she had reached 4.30 with that beans. Ah! Such a what? Cannot survive any spiritual battle because all the devil needs to do is to just take beans away. <laughs> Every man that strives for the mastery must be temperate in office. In order for your spirit to be the organ that drives your universe, there are some deliberate decisions you have to take no counselor will advise you to take them it is personal paul is giving us insight into his personal life at this point and bible scholars said he wrote this in athens during the olympics yes it was during he saw the athletes how they were then he said no this is christianity mm, that if you are going to master the spirit life he went to for olympics If you are going to master the spirit life you have to do more than this you know when you started praying in tongues how you pray for 30 minutes the tongue is dry you have to strive it's not easy for any of us let me tell you the truth you have to strive so that your capacity can increase by the holy ghost it gives you a capacity that can go for five hours can go for seven hours a time come you are not afraid of prayer again you developed it over time by shutting down some other things 
so that your capacity for prayer can extend if you want something to grow you will search the others so that the energy to push those ones are channeled in one direction you are envious of people that can pray all night without coming to church they can pray all night in their room they didn't start that way they began to develop it and that prayer was to them more important than sleep so they sacrifice sleep sacrifice food sacrifice something i had a friend that he does night fasting he doesn't eat from seven o'clock then he goes for night vigil he will eat in the day seven o'clock he will shut down all kinds of skills just to gain mastery just to bring the spirit and pedestal it as the organ from whence their lives are driven so he say everyone that struggled for the mastery is temperate in all things even though physical athletics is done to obtain a carnal crown but we do spiritual athletics to obtain a crown that is not carnal he said i run in my race my race is not an uncertain race my race is a defined race now a lot of people are involved in this race and they don't know why they are running research has shown that the average christian in two thousand in the in the 21st century doesn't know why he's in church average if you pass out a questionnaire on sunday morning why people are going to church and ask them why are you going to church if they are sincere with you 70 percent of your feedback will be that they, they go to church because that's what they are used to not because there's anything significant going on 